Jono, over 19 years in L&D. Uh, he actually got his start in operational training. So for those of you, a little bit of classroom training. He is passionate about problem solving, which has led him to designing eSnacks, which is actually micro learning before micro learning was actually a thing. Um, we had a good chat. I, what I found out about Jono is he is super passionate about problem solving. And he also believes that the shortfall of digital is the social element. So super excited to hear more about what he has to say about that. And without further ado, Jono, I'm gonna stop sharing my screen so you can now present. Great, thanks Kat. Um, thanks for the kind intro and uh, yeah, welcome to everyone in attendance. Um, I have to say this uh, this topic is is really interesting. I think it's a hot topic, so I couldn't refuse the uh, the, the the invite to um, to share a few um, a, a few of my thoughts and ideas on the topic. So let me get my screen up. Okay, can everyone see that? Someone just needs to say yes. Yeah. Okay, great. So, so I, I wanted to share some of my initial reflections on the topic around delivering nuanced skills and and you know innovating your content strategy or innovating a content strategy. Um, these are some of my initial th thoughts. So, you know, firstly, from an organizational perspective, as L&D professionals, um, L&D leaders. We ultimately want strategies that are going to influence some kind of performance needle. Uh, from an individual perspective, and, and I talk about the collective, um, about ourselves and also our people, we ultimately want strategies that are on our side. So, you know, strategies that work for the organization and for the people. Um, you know, when it comes to skills, developing new skills is hard. It requires motivation, commitment, resilience, patience. You know, we, we, we talk about upskilling and reskilling. If you think about reskilling, moving into a new domain of expertise, um, you know, it's, it, it's, it's not an easy path. It's not an easy journey. Um, there, needs to be a, there, need, there needs to be a lot of motivation and commitment um, and, and drive from the individual. And then lastly, um, the, the aspiration... Uh, at least what I've observed um, in, in the industry at the moment, is to create an environment that cultivates lifelong learners. So individuals that have this innate um, love and 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 get fulfillment from from or, 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 or in search of intellectual fulfillment. But really, is lifelong learning enough when it comes to developing new skills? I think I think probably not. They're slightly different. So, so what I want to take you through is, is really what I think are the key building blocks uh, for, for, de for delivering skills or developing skills and also thinking about your content strategy and how you can innovate around your content strategy. Um, so three key building blocks, skills, content, and experience. So the first question I think we need to ask ourselves is what skills will create value for our organization and our people? Um, and sometimes we forget about our people, and I think that's where we can get stuck. Organizations can get stuck when it's just too much of a, uh, um, um, a top-down approach. So we need to think about top-down and bottom-up. Um, I came across this 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 quote uh, from Albert Einstein, and it, it, it really um, kind of resonated with me around this particular topic around skills. Um, and really highlights, uh, you know, what what I what I observe in in and in, in my experience is that we're so quick to jump to solutions, um, and when it comes to skills development, um, we really need to spend a little bit more time thinking about um, the skills. How can we contextualize skills for the for our organization and make it meaningful for our people before we jump into looking at what the content solutions are and what the training programs are and all the all the lovely L&D initiatives out there. So I think, you know, the first key thing when it comes to skills is, is really defining the what and making it specific to your organization. Um, so defining, identifying the skills that you, you believe are important to the organization 
and then adding meaning to those skills, uh, giving it some definition. You might also want to have some proficiency level statements. Um, essentially, what that does is it brings it brings skills to life uh, for 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 your people. Um, but it also helps downstream when you're looking at your content strategy, um, your assessment strategy, how you're going to validate skills, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so if you're looking to use um, algorithms or AI, uh, the more the, the more detail, the more definition you have uh, when it comes to the algorithm, the better the, the, better the curation of content um, at the end of the day. Uh, what I would say is focus on the key skills. Don't overcook it. Um, you know, one can get overwhelmed by some of the competency libraries out there. Um, the last competency library I worked with was the um, uh, IBM competency library, and I think it had something like 35,000 different competencies in it. I mean, that's quite overwhelming. You know, so really think about what the, what the key skills are. What, what are the skills that are going to add value in context? Um, and, and, and focus on those skills. And you can always build on, build on top of those skills over time. And then last but not least, um, connect the dots between skills and career development. If we're thinking about um, this from an individual's perspective, um, individuals are going to be investing a lot of time, effort, energy um, into developing new skills. What's in it for them? Um, is the intersect between skills and career development something that might be compelling um, and, and, and something that creates that level of motivation that they need? Um, to develop skills and new skills. If we move on to, to, to content, um, the next key question is really around how do we source, select, and contextualize content quickly? So when it comes to upskilling and reskilling, I think what's really important is, have to ha is to have a really good knowledge base and diverse opinion as the basis for skills development. And I think this is where curation actually becomes essential to the skills development process. Being able to get the cream to rise to the top in terms of getting the best subject matter expertise out there, uh, not necessarily in your organization, but in, in the world, um, and getting diverse opinions. So, so individuals can start developing their, their own frame of reference and their own understanding around a particular skill. This really gives us an opportunity to think about curation differently and flipping curation on its head. Um, you know, curation was often an, an afterthought, um, you know, where you design a course or you design a program and then afterwards you've got some curated um, assets and, and resources that people can access. We can flip curation on its head and actually make it central to the learning design process using, um, you know, uh, innovative technologies like Filtered's content intelligence. Um, you know, it really makes curation uh, possible at speed um, and in a, in, a, in, a, in a very qualitative manner. And I'm not saying let's remove internal SMEs from the process. What I'm saying is let's let's look at a different role for SMEs to play in the in, in the role of curation, and that's really to leverage your SMEs to validate, um, you know, this curated knowledge base, and then help create contextualized content. So you know your content strategy could be a combination of curation and creation. Now. We've got the skills, we've got the content. We need to, we need to, we need to think about the experience that brings this all together. And this is this is bigger than just the learning experience. This is really about the colleague experience within the context of skills development. How do we how do we deliver an experience that makes skills development compelling compelling for our people? I came across this quote from uh, from Matt, who is the uh, founder of WordPress. Um, and, and I really love this quote. Technology is best when it brings people together. And I think, you know, in, in today's day and age, thinking about how digital learning is really uh, front and center, it's easy to forget about the human element of, of, of learning. And, and, and it's, it, the human element is probably one of the most important aspects of learning, not necessarily digital or tech. You know, tech and digital are enablers, um, but the human element is, is really essential um, to that skills development process. So when it comes to the experience, um, I'd recommend thinking systemically about the experience you want to deliver. 
You know, think about the work, think about the worker, think about the workplace. What are the various levers that you need to pull to create that environment that encourages people to, to learn and develop new skills? Um, blend digital with the human elements of skills development. You know, teaching, mentoring, feedback, social. I think feedback is probably one of the most underutilized tools in learning but yet one of the most effective and, or can be one of the most effective tools um, to use in, in, in learning. And then last but not least, make skills development intentional, not a byproduct of your learning initiatives. So, so in summary, um, uh, here's, a, here's, here's a, a distilled list of, of thoughts. Uh, firstly, make skills de development meaningful for your organization and its people. Um, curate knowledge, create context, and then finally leverage tech, but don't forget about the human element. And that is me done. Wonderful. Thank you for all of that, Jono. I've got lots of notes and I saw a lot of emojis come up. Um, it looks like a lot of energy around the human element when it comes to, to feedback and kind of that hug that wraps around the technology piece. And I love what you said about uh, leveraging curation and the cream to the top and really positioning your SMEs to be more effective to then go in and validate and free them up to do more higher impact uh, tasks. So uh, fantastic. Thank you so much for that.